did. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Welcome to today's webinar, Step-by-Step, -step, How to Start a Walking School Bus Program at Your School. Uh, my name is Michelle Lieberman. I'm uh, the Technical Assistance Manager at the Safe Routes to School National Partnership, and I will be your moderator today. So before we get started, a little bit about the National Partnership. If you're not familiar with us, we're a national nonprofit organization working to improve the lives and of kids and communities um, by promoting active, healthy lifestyles, equity, and safe infrastructure that supports uh, walking and bicycling. A few housekeeping things in GoToWebinar. On the left is the GoToWebinar viewer, where you'll see the presentation today. And on the right is the control panel, where you can raise your hand, ask questions, and select your audio mode. There are two ways uh, to listen to us today, either through your telephone or mic and speakers. If you're having sound problems with one selection, uh, try the other option. And if you run into more issues, uh, we'll do our best to field any of those issues. Just send us a message in the chat box. Everyone is muted today, um, but we definitely want to hear your input. You can use the questions box to ask speaker questions uh, for the Q&A portion of the webinar. And we'll try to answer as many of these as we can um, if there's time at the end. I also want to let you know that uh, we'll have a recording of this webinar up on our website in case you want to forward it to your friends and colleagues or watch it later again. Um, you'll just have to go to our website, click on the resources header, and select webinars in the left-hand menu. And we'll have that up in the next couple of days. All right. We want to start with a polling question. Um, so are you familiar with walking school bus programs? We'll give everybody a, a couple minutes to answer that. Uh, while we're doing that, I want to introduce you to our speakers today. Um, we're going to start out with uh, Victoria Custodio, who is a health education consultant with the Safe and Active Communities Branch in Chronic Disease and Injury Control Division um, within the California Department of Public Health. For the past six years, Victoria has provided communities throughout California with technical assistance, training, resources and guidance on effective safe routes in school and active transportation strategies. Uh, she currently serves as the Regional Technical Assistance Coordinator as part of Caltrans's Active Transportation Resource Center and was formerly part of the California Safe Routes in School Technical Assistance Resource Center, a joint project of the California Department of Public Health and University of California, San Francisco. We also have Kate Menning, um, our Field Services Manager with the Safe Routes School National Partnership located in Ohio. Uh, she is a facilitator for the Safe Routes uh, Academy in Ohio, um, as well as she supports the advancement of physical activity opportunities through project and technical assistance, coalition building, policy advancement, presentations, workshops, and program support. And she manages the Ohio Safe Routes Network. All right. Let's, looks like almost everybody has voted, uh, so let's go ahead and close the poll. Let's see. So it looks like about 80% of uh, the attendees today have, are familiar with walking school buses, um, and a, a few aren't. So hopefully everybody will be able to learn something new from this webinar. All right introduce the speakers, and at this point I want to turn it over uh, to Victoria. All right. Hi. Thank you so much, Michelle, for that introduction. Um, I appreciate the opportunity to be on this webinar today. Uh, my comments today will be brief, but aim to give you an introduction to how the California Department of Public Health, which I'll refer to as CDPH from here on out, is involved in this effort to promote walking school buses. Um, again, my name is Victoria Custodio, and I'm with the Active Transportation Resource at the California Department of uh, Public Health. The Active Transportation Resource Center supports Caltrans Active Transportation Program, which includes um, supporting safe routes to school efforts uh, statewide here in California. Um, we're working with Caltrans through an interagency agreement uh, to do our technical assistance work, so I also want to give uh, Caltrans a thank you for allowing us to be on this webinar today. 
Um, our California Active Transportation Program has broad goals of increasing the proportion of active travel trips and increasing safety and mobility for bicyclists and pedestrians throughout California, um, not just safe routes to school, but um, uh, for, for um, individuals of all ages and abilities. All right, next slide, please. So again, my comments today are going to be brief. Um, CDPH is pleased to be involved with the development of this toolkit and is excited to have the partnership help with its dissemination. This toolkit was developed by the Safe Routes to School National Partnership with support from CDPH, including staff time from the California Active Transportation Resource Center. And just a little more background, the impetus for this toolkit development was based on a series of internal collaborations and dialogues within CDPH and also with the partnership that revealed that a comprehensive walking school bus toolkit along with technical assistance and training could have widespread use and value to a number of different statewide public health and active transportation initiatives here in California that, that encompass school and or community-based programs that promote health throughout through everyday opportunities for safe, affordable physical activity. So it was that idea that, that from that idea that we approached the Safe Routes to School Partnership for assistance. I do want to note that CDPH has um, recognizes that there are many other walking school bus guides and tools that have been developed previously that we know are wonderful in their own right. And we've actually consulted, we've looked through many of them um, in the development of this, own, of this toolkit. Um, many of these, um, including a great walking school bus toolkit that was launched by the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health in the spring of 2015, served as a basis for the toolkit that the partnership is about to share today. Okay, next slide, Michelle. All right. And of course, CDPH supports walking school buses because they're associated with multiple health benefits. And here's our, our short list. Um, increased daily physical activity, improved safety for um, vulnerable communities, increased family and community engagement, and a cleaner environment. So I'm not going to be talking about um, the health benefits today. That's not part of um, what we've uh, set this time aside for, but um, I'm happy to note that the toolkit does have um, uh, literature references for um, that, that, that link walking school buses to these particular um, health benefits. Next slide, please. So once again, we feel that having a CDPH endorsed toolkit has, a great, has great potential for use in California and we hope they'll also have, it'll be used nationwide. There are some of the programs, these are some of the programs that we know can benefit from such a resource. Our Champions for Change program is part of uh, CDPH's Nutrition Education and Obesity Prevention Branch. Uh, Caltrans administers the California Active Transportation Program, which supports active transportation projects that include safe routes to school engineering projects, as, as well as non-infrastructure projects in, and programs. Um, that encompass education, encouragement, and enforcement programs. And we expect that, that the toolkit, once it, now that it's disseminated and ready for use, that there's going to be much more interest uh, here in California in the future. Um, and I'll just make a plug that we are working with the partnership now to, um, to finalize um, a service agreement so that they will be able to provide limited technical assistance uh, to some California communities uh, to, to implement this toolkit and then work with us so that we can learn about um, how it can be um, maximized um, for use and dissemination in California. So we'll be working with a few um, folks in California who are interested and, um, and, and if I switch to the next slide, um, here's my contact information and um, so I'll be available for questions and, and again answering uh, questions for those who might be interested in additional technical assistance. Um, that's my introduction. Thank you again for having me today, and please feel free to reach out to me um, with any uh, concerns. I think that's all I have for today, Michelle. Great. Thank you, Victoria. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kate to walk us through the toolkit. Great. Thank you, both Michelle and Victoria. I hope uh, folks can hear me fine and can also see my screen. Um, as uh, Michelle introduced us, uh, the uh, Safe Routes to School National Partnership has been working with um, Victoria's organization to, to you know, develop this toolkit for them. But um, 
So we have uh, some specific goals for today's uh, webinar. We would like to introduce the concept and the benefits of walking, the Walking School Bus Program, to review how this toolkit can be used to plan and implement a program, and to also provide time at the end to ask questions about planning a program and next steps in that planning process. So um, I'm going to you know, walk through all of the, the, the toolkit, how it's structured, some of the uh, different topics and introductions and resources that are within it. Um, please feel free at any time to put a question in the questions box so that we can have, at the, at the end, we can um, respond to your questions. Um, hopefully in the order that they're being received, and we'll get to as many as we can. So um, in addition to our, uh, our goals, today we have a few learning objectives that we would hope that you can take away from this webinar. Uh, the first is to list one public health benefit associated with walking school buses. Uh, the second is to name two tools within the step-by-step -step How to Start a Walking School Bus at Your School Toolkit. And the third is to be able to name at least three of the five steps shared during the webinar that can help you start a walking school bus. So just keep those in mind, and um, we are going to go ahead and get started right away. So um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with what a walking school bus is, the basic definition of a walking school bus is that it is a safe and fun way for kids to get physical activity as they travel to and from school with adult supervision. Um, you know, a typical program has a, air quotes, quote unquote, bus of students that walk along a set route with one or more adults leading it. Picking, up, picking children up at design, uh, designated stops and walking them to school. And then this process is reversed in the afternoons on the way home. It's really that simple and can be structured in a number of different ways. Some of the benefits um, that have already we've, we've already touched upon, that Victoria has touched upon in, in her component, um, include the increased number, increasing the number of students that walk and bike to school. We know that there are students that have the capacity to walk and bike just because of their, their closeness to the school, but there may be elements within the neighborhood or other reasons for those kids not walking to school. And um, the increasing the number of kids walking and biking to school is going to benefit them as well as our community. We also give children and adults the opportunity to socialize and to get to school on time. Um, walking school buses, you know, walk along a set route. They can be timed where you have stops where kids are supposed to be, just as with a regular bu uh, bus stop. And so you know that based on that timing that those kids are going to get to school on time based on the pace of the walking school bus. So we hope to alleviate tardiness and um, absenteeism in some cases as well as giving kids time to socialize and blow off a little steam and get some exercise before school. Um, on the school side we and the community side, benefits include reducing traffic congestion and sometimes reducing transportation costs as well. Um, Parents driving their kids to school can account for 20 to 25 percent of morning rush hour traffic. And um, you know, there have been studies that uh, show that the congestion around a school and the air quality around schools can, um, can, is, is higher and can be detrimental to kids, particularly people with asthma or other um, respiratory illnesses. And that leads us to air quality. Um, walking school buses, just by the fact that they're reducing, hopefully, the number of cars and vehicles that are in and around the school, are, is going to help reduce air pollution, which will improve the air quality around those schools. So now we're just going to jump into the toolkit. Uh, Victoria's organization requested us to develop a toolkit that encompasses the basics of how to start a walking school bus program. Step-by-step um, -step provides an easy, is an easy way to follow and understand um, an outline of how to plan, implement, and assess your program, and to personalize it to make it as effective for your community and school environment as possible. 
This document is available on the Safe Routes to School National Partnership website um, at a link that will be put into the chat box or into the questions box, but it is also available um, in the handouts section of your control panel. So you can download it and start flipping through it right now and um, follow along as we explore the steps to take your, uh, to start your walking school bus program. So our first, um, the, the toolkit kit is set up to walk you through, so to speak, the steps needed to create a successful program. They don't necessarily need to be done in, the or in this order, but some sections should definitely come before others. So we're going to walk through the document as it's been written. The guide starts with background information, um, with uh, information and definitions about the walking school bus program, which we've already briefly reviewed. And then it also has references and citations and implementation steps, which we are going to review in a little bit more detail right now. Before we get started with that, though, I want to point out there are a couple of, uh, at the end of the toolkit, there are appendices. Appendix A is um, a, a worksheet that can assist you with documenting information on the key actions for each of the steps that you should be taking, and then identifying the sources needed for each action. So the appendix is hopefully very useful for folks and is going to be um, an important reference for you as you're planning your walking school bus program. The other um, appendix is Appendix B, and it is a planning timeline that can give you a, like a one-stop area of when you want to take it, listing your actions and putting down dates or marking when you need to um, have uh, actions accomplished in order to move on to the next step and make sure your program gets started on time and you have all of the, the components it, that you need. Um, the resources um, in e on each of these pages highlight, um, are highlighted in each step of the toolkit and can be downloaded with a quick link on that particular link in the live PDF version. Um, so say we need help, help crafting a walking school bus press release. Um, by simply clicking on the link that says press release in the toolkit, um, you can download the actual Word document on a walking school bus press release. And you'll be seeing a lot of these um, resources sprinkled throughout um, the presentation from various pages just to give you an idea of what you can see, what all the links and all the resources uh, can be that are at your disposal. So now that we're familiar a little bit with the format and the additional resources, let's step in to our walking school bus program. The first step is stepping in, getting started by bringing your team together and deciding what kind of walking school bus we're going to offer. Start this step as soon as possible. In fact, you're kind of starting it now just by learning more about a walking school bus program. And then regardless of uh, when you want to start your program, but at least four months before you want your program to start to give you time to get through those other steps. Um, your walking school bus team should be identified with people that can generate support from the school, your community, and create awareness and connections about your program, and have the decision-making power to get your walking school bus rolling. School support is very necessary. Principals, directors or superintendents, key staff, and school board members are the decision makers and are valuable advocates for your program. PTO and PTA members, Students and families are also key to gaining insights and support, as well as building, building enthusiasm for the program. And this is essential in order to keep your program sustainable and focused and viable within your community. Community support as well from outside the school arena, including neighborhood groups, after school programs, local government, law enforcement, biking and walking clubs, or other groups that are interested in helping keep children safe, and healthy and active 
can also be very, very great partners. So team questions, once you're bringing your team together, once your team is established, you need to define your program. Um, you want to ask questions such as, what kind of program do you envision? Will it be formal? Will it be informal? Or how frequent shall it be? Do walking school buses already exist, whether they're formal or formal programs? And how formal will your program be? Um, is it just going to be a planned route that you will promote as um, you know, a great way to walk your kids to school? Or is it going to be a more formal student registered program when you're, where you will um, have leaders and students register for the program and provide that, you know, have a checkoff list even of kids that are in the walking school bus? When will the program start and end? Um, you want to start your planning from the first date that you want to start and work back from that day. So if, you're st if you want to start your program on September 1st, um, you want to give yourself three or four months to really um, plan your program well. So you're going to want to start that program in, you know, start planning that program in May or June or July of that year. Um, how often is your program going to operate? Is it going to be once a month? Is it going to be once a week? Is it going to be a daily program? Is it going to be seasonal in nature? When will it be available? Is it going to be a before school program, an after school program? Is it going to be either or or both? And then how many routes do you feel at this point as a team you could manage? Um, this is going to help identify how many leaders that you're going to need for a walking school bus program and the amount of resources that are needed for your program. So then we're going to move on. Once you get that started and you've got your team together and you've got um, a direction that you're moving forward in, you want to start at least three months before the start date the step up step, planning your route. It should be started at least three months before your start date. And choosing the best route for student safety and accessibility is key to a successful program. So this step could take some time. First, you want to identify where your students, where your students that can or do walk and where they live. You may know this by observing where uh, current walkers enter the school grounds. But uh, other resources, if available, are proximity maps. These are maps that identify with a dot where each student that attends that school lives and creates a visual representation of where most students live in proximity to the school. It's a great place to start when you're planning your routes because you're going to want a route that is accessible to the most amount of students that can or do walk to school. Students that live close to the school are more likely to walk. So usually within a mile of the school is where you're going to want to focus your energies for a walking school bus. Another component of uh, stepping up and planning your route is uh, you know, proximity maps. They're just one part of the puzzle. You also need to identify your best routes and stops. And so you need to know the condition of that environment. Conducting a walkability assessment or even a more formal walk audit of your potential routes will give your team firsthand knowledge of the sidewalk, the intersections, the lighting, and the other conditions along those potential routes so your team can make an educated choice when identifying your route and planning the stops where kids and leaders will meet. This is an important part of the planning process and can take some time. So again, starting this part of your process um, as early in advance as possible to your start date is prudent. The last major step of, the, of, of uh, stepping up, of planning your route, is creating a map that shows the route and stops locations if necessary and the pickup drop-off times for each stop. Um, this is very similar to one for bus stops. Parents know when to expect the bus, so they know, uh, they know to have their kids at that stop or out you know, in that route before that time. 
um, posting this route on your school website, posting the map and distributing it uh, to participating students and their families, and of course to your walking school bus leaders are, is, is going to be an important component of um, making sure your walking school bus is accessible and well-known and well-promoted. Um, this particular map is, uh, isn't a walking school bus map per se, but it does show key areas where walking is accessible to students. In fact, they do show recommended routes with sidewalks in their, map, in their key. They also show roads with walkable shoulders because this has a rural component to their community. And it also indicates where crossing guards will be, sta will be stationed where intersections with signals are, and where crosswalks are within their community. So this map really gives a lot of good information for a parent and even a new family moving into the community on where the best ways to get to and from school would be if your kids are going to be walking. Um, in addition, the map can also include a student code of conduct with contact information, a description of your program, and promotional information. Um, there is a sample code of conduct form as one of the downloadable resources in this step as well. So our third step for a walking school bus is stepping out, recruiting those students, recruiting students and recruiting leaders and promoting your program. We're getting this information out into our community. We would hope that this step would start at least two months before your start date. Um, this step, again, is kind of that which came first, the chicken or the egg step, when you're planning your walking school bus. You need to know how many students will be in each bus, um, with, uh, which will identify how many leaders that you're going to need. But the number of leaders that you have available will dictate the number of routes that you can offer or the number of kids you can have in each route. We will present this in the order on the screen, but feel free to put your chicken before your egg or your egg before your chicken. Um, and then in addition, you want to promote the program to your entire community of students and adults and the community in general. So student recruitment. Um, is going to be dictated a bit by how your program is going to function, whether it's a formal program that requires registration for students um, or more information where walking school buses are available and families can take advantage by attending. Um, also consider the needs of students with physical, developmental, and mental health disabilities and how to best accommodate them into your program. Your proximity map will help you identify where students live and therefore the routes that they are likely to take and the volume of students that may participate. Um, school staff, principals, and maintenance staff may also have knowledge of uh, the students that do walk and where they walk regularly and who could benefit from a walking school bus program. Reaching students and families include uh, can be um, you know, as simple as including in school announcements, emails and newsletters, flyers, uh, school events and functions, PTO, PTA meetings, and other communication methods that work at your school. Classroom presentations about the program can pique interest, as well as offer an opportunity to inform about student expectations and code of conduct. Again, there are resources available for promotion, um, for conduct and registration and, uh, and recruitment checklists, and a student recruit recruitment checklist flyer that you can use to document everything that you need to do from a uh, re student recruitment standpoint. Leader recruitment can follow along those same lines. You do need to know how many leaders you will need. Um, typically, these are adults who volunteer to walk with your students to and from school on a regular route. And um, it starts with knowing how many you are going to need per walking school bus to meet student and adult uh, ratios if those, if those are needed for your program. Um, CDC ratios are 6 to 1 at the most, but common sense um, based on your student ages, abilities, the distance that you're walking, and the environment should also be considered. 
um, checking with schools um, on their field trip requirements may be an appropriate guide to the number of um, leaders that you would want in a formal program. In addition to the ways to reach students that we've kind of already gone over, um, because family members may be interested in participating, and you can promote the program and the need for leaders at the same time when you're doing student recruitment, you may also find that community-based organizations, such as uh, service organizations, senior programs, a walk-in club, and uh, school staff might be interested in providing leadership on these walking school buses. Training and maintenance, uh, training and maintaining your communication with leaders on a regular basis is very important. Um, we're going to get to leader training in just a moment, but reaching out to current and potential leaders through social media, emails, newsletters, and phone calls um, can help retain and encourage other others to volunteer, and recognizing your leaders can also help with retention and promotion. So the step out section also has a leadership training section within it. Um, this helps provide um, a guide to how to conduct a walking school bus leader training, and it provides a host of resources uh, available for download. Um, on how to conduct a leader training. Walking school bus leader training um, should be held within a month of your start date so that your leaders feel comfortable with both uh, their responsibilities and the environment they're walking in. And it will help them feel ready for, their, for the kickoff day and getting started in their program. Uh, this, the timing will also ensure that you have all the equipment that they need, any supplies that are needed, um, and other materials available for your big day, such as the maps. And uh, you can also address any questions that may arise during the training process. Uh, the walking school bus training checklist is included in the, resource, in the resources section, as well as sample agendas, supplies and equipment lists, student lists, and other resources that will help plan your training smoothly and efficiently. Um, there are also web-based leader training resources available, and those links are included in the guidance that you can download. Your training should focus on three major components. Safety information, which is reviewing the rules of the road in your community, specific pedestrian protocol and resources, and information leaders can review and share with their students and the families of those students. Um, your leaders should feel comfortable and knowledgeable about road safety. Um, the second component is protocol and expectations. Route leaders should know what behavior is expected of them and what to expect from students. Reviewing how a typical day should go, um, what to do if a leader cannot walk that day, and um, what to do in case of emergency, or any other protocols such as sign in and sign out, and even what maybe to wear if there are specific uh, vests or other um, apparel that they need to wear as a walking school bus leader. The third uh, component is logistics, distributing and reviewing the equipment that um, each leader will be provided, supplies, and the final route map, reviewing the timing for each stop if you have your stops timed out, and focusing on areas of consideration along with each route uh, such as intersections and railroad tracks. So when you're planning um, your leader training, you may want to, one com great thing to do is take your leaders out to the site, give them time to actually walk the route, make sure that they're comfortable with their environment and they're familiar with the intersections and um, the road safety information that they're going to need along that way. Also, um, as you plan your walking school bus, questions could arise about liability. Um, the good news is that a well-run walking school bus program has small risk. There is information and resources from Change Lab Solutions linked in the toolkit regarding liability. And your administration or risk management department may have recommendations, as well as guidance on volunteer screening. So this is going to be very specific to your school and district um, policies, protocols, and so you will need to talk to them about that if the issue comes up. 
Another, the, the last section of stepping out is promotion, making sure that people are aware of your program and can easily you know, get connected with you and the program to be a part of a walking school bus. So promoting your program are, is best in the ways that your school community connects with your students, with your family, and with the staff. So whether it's emails, flyers, presentations, events, social media, or some other way that your, your school communicates with students and families, that's the way to try to tap into those, um, that, those communication outlets. You know, also, you know, share this information with your local community on a regular basis through press releases, community news, on your website, and through partner communications if you develop relationships with organizations and they can share the good work that's being done at your school and the partnerships that have been developed. Um, flyers, press releases, social media language templates are also included in the resources that are available and are easily modified to suit the needs that you, you would have. As your program ramps up, regularly report your successes, Share fun stories from your leaders or your students, and cross-promote the need for leaders and student participants all the time. Um, your program can be a link to your community, a transportation resource for families, and an asset to your school district. Um, keeping up with this will help you in step five when we're evaluating and adjusting our program. But first, we have step four, which is stepping off. We're stepping off the, the curb, and we're starting and running our walking school bus program. It's your big day, and you want to get off on the right foot, so to speak. Um, this is the culmination of all your planning and promotion training and recruitment efforts. Um, leaders are trained and understand their responsibilities. Students and families are informed about how to be a part of the program and their responsibilities. And school administration is aware and understand um, about the implementation and who to contact if school changes or emergencies that affect students attending school need to be shared. Um, your kickoff day should be something special. And what better way to generate interest than start starting on a walk to school month in October of every year? You know, registering your day on a walk to school day website and taking advantage of their resources is also a great way to um, just expand and learn more about the ways that you can um, encourage students to walk or bike safely to school. Tips for running your program are also in this section and include things like open communication, keeping in touch with your leaders throughout the, through regular meetings or e-news, um, or emails, attracting and retaining students with, by, you know, creating fun. Hello? I hope you can still hear me. Let's see. Uh-oh. You're good now? Okay. There was a blip. Got it. Okay. So, I hope we didn't miss too much on step four, but um, we'll just keep on going. Tips for running your program are also in this section. This includes things like having open communication with your leaders and with your students, keeping in touch with them through meetings and emails, attracting and retaining students with fun and safe activities, and low cost or low cost giveaways, for example, and continuing to promote and recruit through the span of the program. Um, sometimes even things like rewards for good behavior, mentions on the school announcements about, you know, great walk to school day, you know, members, and inviting local dignitaries to participate as guest leaders can help put a spring in your step. So while you're stepping forward into your program, you do need to think about stepping back. And step five is stepping back. This is evaluating and adjusting your program. You may find that once your program has stepped off, that there are changes and adjustments that need to be made with the routes or logistics or equipment or the popularity of the program. Keeping in touch with leaders and students 
um, adding the fun and safe activities to attract and retain them, and responding to safety or other issues quickly, and documenting and adjusting your program as needed is part of this step. So in order to you know, gather information, you should get feedback from your leaders and from the students and the school um, to help assist with these adjustments um, via reporting um, and even through promotion. Leader, student, and family survey templates are available to help with information gathering in the resources section. And as you evaluate, adjust, and promote, continue to plan you know, continue to plan to continue your program and even expand it um, as interest from your community grows. Momentum for your work may provide opportunities to partner with other stakeholders and other organizations in your community and strengthen relationships with other community entities such as health departments, transportation, community government, enforcement agencies, and other walking, biking, or physical activity organizations clubs, and advocates. Your walking school bus can step you and your community into improved safety, better health, and improved walking and biking resources. So let's lace up our shoes and let's get started. So our next uh, step here, that's really the conclusion of my walkthrough of step-by-step -step how to start a walking school bus. So now I want to ask you, when will you begin planning a walking school bus program? So we're going to set, uh, set up our second poll question, which will be uh, getting that, uh, we'll get that poll question up right now. And well, let's see how I can do this. This poll must be closed to enable screen sharing. I hope that that poll is up. And We'll give everyone just a minute to go ahead and ask to answer the question. Yep, it's up. Thank you. And that you can also take some time now if you have any specific questions, uh, you know, about the toolkit or about elements within the toolkit. Um, please put them in the questions box now because I know we'll be uh, getting to those in just a minute. So while we're waiting on um, maybe closing out the, we'll give everyone just about 10 more seconds to take the poll question, and we'll see what the results are from that poll question as well. Um, does anybody have, do we want to start, does anyone have a question for me right now that maybe I could answer? Michelle, I don't know if, uh, if you, you know, if you've been monitoring those and if there's something that we can talk about right now. I have, and we've gotten a number of good questions, um, and so I will, yes, I'll start with one. Um, does this information in the guide also apply to biking school buses? Any um, considerations for anything that would be different? Well, I'm glad whoever asked that question asked it, because um, bike trains were are, are another way to it's a walking school bus for bikes, really. Now they are they're planned a little bit differently, just because you want to have safe infrastructure for biking from a for a bike train. But the components of planning it and organizing it and providing leadership on a bike train um, is pretty much the same. You may want to consider um, like uh, bicycle training for your leaders, something a little more in depth because um, you know when bikes break down or if you you have def definitely different enforcement or uh, roadway considerations for cyclists, you're going to want to take those things into consideration when choosing your leaders for a bike train. But the steps in themselves and the planning process, you can definitely use um, those steps in order to achieve your goals for a bike train. Okay, so we have the um, poll results are showing now. I can't see them, but there you are. I, I can any can someone see them and just shout out what the poll results were? I will. Um, so a little over half of the uh, responses so that they don't have a timeline yet for planning a walking school bus, um, but about a quarter 
are planning on um, starting or planning a walking school bus program in the next three months and about 13% in the next four to six months. And really exciting, about 10% already have one, um, a walking school bus program already going. Well, that's great. Well, thank you all for answering those poll questions. Um, why don't we go on to another question? And Victoria, I think you are also unmuted as well. So do we have any questions for Victoria as well? Yes. OK, I'm going to, we have a number of questions. And we're probably not going to get through all of them, but I'm going to try to get through, through as many as possible. Um, okay. In terms of uh, staff needed to plan and run a walking school bus, um, what would you kind of anticipate or expect um, would be realistic in terms of needing you know, part-time or full-time staff um, and how much staff time it really takes up front to get a walking um, school bus program off the ground? Having somebody who is the point person, a dedicated person to plan and implement the program, is it can be key if you're if you're planning a really formal program where you're recruiting leaders and you're creating these routes that um, students need to re register for, let's say. Um, but as far as the number of leaders go, that's really dictated by the number of students that um, you have along a route that will be participating and um, any uh, leader to student ratios that need to be established. So um, we've talked about the program as the leaders being volunteer positions, but that organizer, that coordinator, um, it, is, it, it is valuable to have somebody who is a staff member, somebody who is being paid to do that. And some walking school bus programs do pay their walking school bus leaders a stipend, um, similar maybe to the way a crossing guard would be paid to um, provide that service to the program. Great. Um, one sort of related question, um, any uh, tips or examples where um, uh, Sponsorships from businesses or other programs have been used to fund uh, walking school bus programs. I I have heard uh, most of the programs that I am aware of have are are more volunteer in nature. However, um, recruiting things like gift cards from local businesses to use as um, prizes or uh, gifts for your walking school bus leaders, um, definitely can be done. The giveaways that kids might receive on a walking school bus day for a particular special event, let's say, are things that can be donated by your community. Um, there are, these, the ideas are endless. You could, uh, you could plan a walking school bus um, program where there are, you know, the number of children that participate. There could be a, um, a punch-off tag where if they participate so many times, they turn in their card and they get a prize. So there's, there's uh, incentives for students, but then the incentives for, for leaders, um, besides just the fact that they get to walk with their kids every day, that can be an incentive just within itself. But, um, you know, it, it, you can do, you know, things like gift cards or, you um, you know, a uh, recognition ceremony at the end of the year, certificates. Um, the, you know, it's really up to you. It's up to what you think is valuable for your volunteers or your walking school bus leaders. Great. Thanks. Um, a couple of questions that have come in about mapping and mapping your routes online. Um, any uh, tips or resources to do that. And I, do, I know we do have one link in the Walking School Bus Toolkits. Mm -hmm. um, I can just speak in general. Um, Victoria may have some resources that are California specific. Um, in general, um, map, proximity mapping it can be done through like GIS maps or even through um, free services like Google Maps. Um, what is it, Google Earth, I think you can upload um, Excel spreadsheets and create very simple maps of that nature where you can just upload addresses 
um, from an Excel spreadsheet into the program, and boom, you get a proximity map of, in general, where every, every address is located with a PIN. So um, some school districts do this regularly anyway, especially if they have busing. They certainly need to know where the students live in order to map their bus routes accordingly. So um, that could be a that something that the schools are already doing. Um, your community uh, transportation or uh, geographic information system or GIS um, departments may have resources of that nature. And some states, as Ohio does, um, provide that resource at the state level for schools and districts that um, want to uh, advance safe routes to school by creating proximity maps to get a better idea of where their students live. Hi, and this is Victoria. I'll just jump in and say it's slightly different here in California. Um, there isn't really a state agency that can help you um, draft your, a, a walking school bus map for your local community. So it's really in your interest to work with your city, school, or regional transportation um, organizations here in California. And they will often have access to mapping tools um, and can help you in many cases with um, getting started. But again, um, one of the things that we emphasize within this toolkit are there, that there are some um, existing tools and, and resources for creating your own map. So you want to be sure to check that out as part of the toolkit. Great. Thank you, both of you. Um, tips on starting a walking school bus in a rural area. And could this be something that's combined with uh, the traditional you know, yellow bus program? I, I, absolutely, I absolutely believe that that can be done. Um, we do, you know, rural communities have much larger footprints for their students and in general might need, you know, rely on busing to get those students from those surrounding areas to the school. But that doesn't mean that a walking school bus can't work in that area. Um, if we ha if you want to uh, you know give your kids the opportunity to socialize and walk a little bit, um, having drop off areas for those students bus that are bused in that are farther away from the school with a route that is a walking school bus route with leaders that just walk those kids, let's say a half a mile from uh, the from the school and back. Um, from like a designated bus stop area. There are also um, some rural communities that have these rural bus stops, so to speak, where kids congregate and that is where the students um, are picked up. And walking school buses could be established to those you know, centralized bus stops, so to speak, um, as a way to get kids to school without needing to be dropped off at those bus stops as well. And again, it's, it's going to be very specific to how your community um, environment is and, and how transportation works in your community. But a walking school bus program, if there's, if there's availability uh, from an infrastructure standpoint and a, a will through volunteerism or walking school bus leaders, then I think it can happen. Great. Thanks, Kate. Um, let's see. <laughs> sort of related, uh, possibly. Tips for starting a walking school bus in an area where there's a snow, where there's snow a lot of the year or part of the year. Yes. Aren't we loving snow? Which I think we've heard from a couple of folks that uh, are on this call. They're in the snow right now, snowing as we speak. Um, but yet, yeah, snow can be a barrier for walkers because folks are, you know, may not um, clear their sidewalks or they may have to walk in the street because of that. But walking school buses work the same way in, in snowy conditions as they would in non-snowy conditions. So you still have a leader that is walking with those students and in some ways, it, it makes it for a safer environment for those kids, especially if the conditions aren't ideal, um, or like early in the morning, for example, before folks can get out and shovel their walks. Um, you still want to make sure that those routes are as accessible and open as possible. So 
you know, routes that are well maintained by the community or that have access to, you know, snow shoveling volunteers even. I know that there are a number of communities that um, provide snow crew, like snow yetis or snow angels, which are like volunteers that go out and help remove snow in front of houses that um, have significant needs um, based on the people who own those homes, maybe they're elderly or they have disabilities or um, they can get out and just help remove snow in that way. So partnering with those organizations or volunteer groups can also be of great value, just that you know that, that the programs exist and you can cross-promote your programs or focus on particular areas in your community to make sure that safety for our students is at the forefront for walkers. Great. Um, I have one question regarding sort of, you know, the logistics of a walking school bus program. Um, mm -hmm. Tips or ways to ensure that uh, a daily walk is still happening, considering that leaders might have emergencies or illnesses. How do you mm -hmm. prevent that? Well, that part of your protocol and your leader training and in the planning prior to your leader training are going to, you're going to be asking these questions of your team. And if you have, uh, taking into account that you have an established uh, walking school bus coordinator, that person is going to be key to making sure that they, she, not only he or she has the number of leaders that are needed on a daily basis, but when emergencies do occur, and a leader cannot attend, that they know the proper protocol and times to contact that coordinator so that a replacement can be put into place um, smoothly and effectively, knowing that you have a number of um, backup uh, walking school bus leaders available that can be called in to um, you know, fill in when there are emergencies. It's, um, I think it's no different than if you have a bus driver that needs to take a day off, you're going to need to find a replacement for that person. Um, and you know, in a, in a more informal setting, just um, when, when parents maybe talk to each other, currently right now there could be walking school buses out there that are very informal where it's just neighbors that say, well, I'll take Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you take Tuesday, Thursday. And um, some days that needs to be flip-flop. It's the same level of communication, except on a larger scale. So making sure that you have those emergency numbers, the um, contact in case of you know needing a sick day or a vacation day, whatever may be, and, and communicating with your contact person as soon as possible. The same will hold true if the school has a snow day, for example, and you need to the, that coordinator needs to contact the leaders and say, hey, if you haven't already heard, we're not having school today, so you don't need to um, go out there and wait for your students because they won't be there. So it works both ways. So open communication um, is and, and knowing who to contact and when is the key there. Great. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Victoria, could I just ask you to reiterate on um, the best way for communities in California to um, talk with us about uh, follow-up technical assistance available? Sure, yes. Thanks so much, Michelle. Um, yeah, so you have my contact information on the slide. Um, and at this point, what I can do is um, if you're interested, if you're here in California and you're interested in additional uh, technical assistance uh, to get your um, walking school bus started um, and you are interested in also applying the, some of the tools and resources within the step-by-step -step toolkit, um, go ahead and shoot me an email and um, we'll take it from there. Um, and I, I want to just um, point out that, you know, we are looking for, again, if you weren't at the start of our, our webinar, we are looking for a few communities within California who are willing to kind of uh, take the toolkit and pilot it in the field and help us really look to see how it can be uh, maximized for use across our state. So um, shoot an email to victoria.custodio at cdph.gov. .ca.gov. Yeah. Yeah. I Thanks, think that Victoria. we're down. Yeah, are we down to the last minute here? We're we gonna. We are. Um, so I was gonna say that if you have additional questions, feel free to send us um, an email because we definitely didn't weren't able to get through all of the questions. Um, 
the recording of this webinar and the slides uh, will be up on our website in the next couple of days under the resources tab. And if you go to the next slide, uh, we'll also be sending out a follow-up survey via email. Please take that survey and provide us input um, so we can make our webinars even better. And thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.